In this video, we're going to take a look at the new wireless earbuds from ASUS, being the updated Setra True Wireless Speed Novas. And let me tell you what, these might be my favorite gaming earbuds I've ever used. But first, let me go on and give you a look over of the box. And just looking it over, you can see a lot of the specs and features that it is packing. But as far as in your box, of course, you're going to get your charging case here or a storage case, a little RGB in there, your earbuds. Now, all this does come in a white version as well. Obviously, we got the black one. You get some replacement tips, small, medium, and large. You get a USB-C to A adapter and then your USB-C dongle, hence them being the Speed Nova, that's one of the upgrades from the originals, is they were just Bluetooth. You didn't have the USB-C dongle, USB-A to C cable, all of your paperwork, and then your little uh, quick start guide here that pretty much shows you some of the shortcuts, which we'll talk about here in a second. Now, before I dive super deep into this video, I'm just going to throw up the standard specs, which you can look right up on ASUS's website and such, because I don't want to bore you with that stuff. I want to talk to you about my actual experience and how did those specs stand up to my actual gameplay in use with these buds. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, of course, is going to be comfort. And we're talking earbuds. I think it's, again, as far as the case and the earbuds as well because you're going to be traveling with these as far as in your bag or whatever in your pocket and we put them on the scale the case with the earbuds in we're getting 58.1 grams again that is with the earbuds in there with the case alone with no earbuds we're getting 47.6 grams earbuds alone with medium tips we're getting 10.6 grams and they are truly lightweight we'll talk about that build here in a second the other thing i want to give you is a measurement of the case so you can see how big this is which it is quite compact we're getting right at 53 we'll say 54 millimeters right there at a the halfway mark and then we'll get the width here we are getting 57 millimeters and then as far as the girth of this case, we're getting right at 33. Now, if you're curious on how big the buds are as well, I'm gonna slap a few measurements here real quick. As far as length down to the mic, you're getting 37 millimeters, as you see right there. The width of this is pretty much standard over here. You're getting right at eight millimeters. And then the width up here from the bud to the outside, pretty much 22 millimeters. Again, the, the basic size of this feels pretty standard to anything like an Apple AirPod or any other buds. But talking more about comfort of these, whenever you put them into your ears, and this is really going to differ person to person. I talk about this in headsets, like comfort's really be subjective. You got more hair or your ears or this, that, or the other. But now we're talking about putting this little thing inside of our canal right there. How is it really going to fit? But I'm just going to talk about my experience. I can't get in here and measure my ear. But whenever they're in my ear here, they're not in there tight. They're not digging in. When I tried to use the small ear tip here, they kind of just rested in there. And then when I went to the large ear tip, as I almost threw it there, the large ear tip, they pretty much wouldn't even see it in. So it was really just the medium tips I could use. And still, they don't really lock in there. But for me, that's something I really like. Now with IEMs, a lot of them kind of dig down into your ear or, you know, what, what are some other ones? I believe it was the Epos ones over here. Whenever I put these in, like you put it there, you twist it, lock in, and it kind of jams down in there. I personally don't like that. Now that is going to block out a whole lot more sound, which we'll talk about in the sound. But when something jams into your ear like that, you're really going to block out some of those outside sounds. With these, again, they kind of sit in there. They did fall out of my ears once whenever I was sitting in bed. But again, they're, I can shake and they are budging. They are budging, but they're not falling out. But again, I, I don't think I would recommend these for working out or going to the gym. But with my experience with them, I mean, they were incredibly comfortable. I never caught myself saying, yo, let me get these off. Oh, my ears are getting like sweaty and moist in there. Again, I just wanted to keep them in. Now, before we get into talking about the sound and how do they perform in gaming, I want to talk about the features and functions because with any wireless earbud, that is a key experience and selling point with them. What are they packing? And my main time using them was with my phone, with the ROG Ally, and then I also used it on my PC and the PlayStation 5. But what I'm going to start off with is showing you the Armory Crate app within my phone. Now, this is an iPhone 14 Pro Max here. And as you see, we just loaded up Armory Crate. I can select the earbuds here. It's going to load up and then choose some of our options. As you see, we've got audio as far as sound optimization, some preset EQs, which we'll talk a lot more about this in sound. I use custom and this is my curve here if you want to just play around with it. But again, hold out till we talk about sound because you might not want 
to jump on that. You have the Dirac, which will again talk more about sound, which is really stinking cool. You got active noise cancellation over here. You got on, off, and ambient, so you can hear the sound outside of you while you still have your game playing. And then you also have auto as far as your ANC, so it'll uh, detect your environment. I usually just left mine on, and the ANC is it's kind of right there in the middle. It's not AirPods or Sony by any means, but uh, it's definitely doing the job. As far as this option, you got lighting, you got some presets to choose from. As you see, mine are set to just a static red. You can also turn them off, which is what I used quite a bit just to preserve some battery life. And then talking about battery life, you got over here as far as your buds and then your case as they will charge inside the case. And I never had any issues with battery life with these. Now the last bit of customization you're gonna have with any app is this little gear icon up here as far as settings. It's gonna load up, and as you see, you got wear detection. So whenever you take the buds out of your ears, they will turn off for you, save you some of that battery life. I usually leave it off just because, again, I'm always using that. But then you got hybrid multi-point, which is pretty cool. As you see, you can connect it up to your phone, you got your Ally, and then a USB dongle. So if you're just in this and you wanna boom, press that, you can do it. Or again, that's what it's synced up to. Whenever you turn the device off, like if I'm watching YouTube over here, it'll play there, but then if I turn that off, it'll automatically go to my Ally or the PlayStation if that's where the dongle is connected. Hopefully that makes sense. It's pretty, it's like smart. It chooses which device you're using is what it will sync to. Oh, let me go back here. Check device, turn off, oh, they just synced off, son of a gun. Okay, so they're just conserving the battery life here because I'm over here chatting too much. Let's put them in, let's go on and take them out. Let's see if we sync up together here. Refresh, there we go. So as you see, it's just saving some of the battery life. But anyways, going back into our gear icon right here. You see you got the hybrid multi-point, which is that thing, the gesture. So this is as far as the button presses on it. You can see play once to tap twice ANC, four times for volume. And that is probably the one thing that got annoying to me is four presses on your ear to adjust the volume. It's like, man, I felt like I was beating up my earlobes, you know, just pressing on it so many times to adjust volume. But that does work on your phone, works on the Ally, also works if you got the USB-C plugged into your PlayStation. You can adjust the volume and everything right on it. Now, not to bore you with software and settings and the customization of these buds, but it is a little different when you get into the Ally compared to over here on my iPhone, uh, again, along over there on PC. So we're gonna select content and then connected devices. So as you can see, there are earbuds right there. I'm going to click it. It is going to load up and I'm connected by the dongle, by the way, as you can see, which you can also sync these up to Bluetooth. But anyways, so you're looking here, you got the Dirac, you got that equalizer, you got all your presets in here that you can choose from going down here. But this is where it gets a little bit different compared to the phone. As you see, you got surround sound, virtual surround sound, reverb, bass boost, voice clarity, compressor, and then you got this ANC as you see, on, off, and ambient. And then you got that adaptive that I was mentioning before. You can turn that on and you got low, mid, and high. And this, what you're looking at here is the exact same as if you were using Armory Crate on the PC. Where it differs, again, is going over to the phone. As you can see in here, you can actually adjust your microphone as well. You got your noise gate. Now over here, you can go into settings and actually adjust your volume and channel mixer, your uh, channel volume, 24-bit, 16-bit, 48 to 96 hertz. You got your recording volume, your voice prompts, and then again, it's just telling you all those presses. One thing I do wish is you can customize the presses as far as like what does what, because I would sure love to change that volume to maybe two presses instead of four, but uh, whatever. And then you got your lighting over here as far as that. Power options, again, that we saw on the app. Hybrid multipoint, all of our connections. Firmware update right up in here and then we're gonna get right back to audio. So again, I'm sorry to ramble on and bore you with the features, functions, and the app controls on us, but I just wanted to show you how it is different on a phone compared to a PC or your Ally. You get a whole lot more customization on the PC and again on your Ally. All right, so here I am in a completely different shirt. That is because whenever I was editing the video, I realized I totally forgot to do the microphone test on these buds, and that is exactly what you hear right now. We are plugged in via USB-C, I'll also do a Bluetooth microphone test as well. But as you saw in the specs of these earbuds, they use the Bone Conduction AI microphones. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with those Bone Conduction headsets, little ones that wrap around and just kind of sit there, don't go into your ears, you know? Anyway, they're talking about clear AI uh, sound communications, right? Now, I'll tell you what, no matter what earbuds I'm using, my AirPods Pro or anything like that, earbud microphones are just 
earbud microphones. You're talking forward, your microphone's back here, so it's always gonna sound, uh, I don't know if I wanna say tinny, cause you can tweak that with any profiles and stuff. And by the way, right now we're plugged and played, we're not tweaking any sound, so I like to give you that core sound. And what you tweak it to is, again, per your environment and your voice and stuff like that. But anyways, you're always talking forward, your microphone's back, so you're gonna get a little bit of that reverb kind of echo in there, no matter what you're using. But again, as that core experience plugged in USB-C, this is the microphone on the new ROG Ally earbuds. Let's go and switch over to Bluetooth and see how it sounds that way. And now you're hearing the microphone via Bluetooth. As you see, the dongle's disconnected and we're recording right to my phone. Again, iPhone 14 Pro Max here, just see how that sounds. I didn't mention it before, but as far as muting a microphone, you can just press. And now we are back on. I'm not sure if you got any audible tones whenever I was pressing it right there, but it's a single press to mute the microphone. And then again, you, she tells you in there in a the female voice, microphone off, microphone on, which you can adjust all that in there in the settings as well as far as just prompts, tones, or just turn them off, whatever. But again, right now we are hearing that microphone via Bluetooth here, no tweaking or anything. This is just straight up core connected to a phone before was USB-C. We'll see what the difference actually sounds like. So now that we had a good look over of these buds, I wanna talk about my time actually using them. And as far as the features and functions using them, talking about pairing up to devices, they paired up pretty darn good. When I mentioned if I'm watching YouTube on my phone and I come over to my Ally via the dongle or even Bluetooth, whatever, there is a slight delay. It's not like, hey, I'm shutting down YouTube, bam, it's right to this. It's definitely a few seconds there. And sometimes I caught myself like, hey man, am I still paired up or whatever? But a cool thing I found out actually, if I'm ever in that debacle or like, man, are they paired up? This is the device I'm using, this is shut down. You actually sit here and hold the, the little haptic sensor or the touch sensor, whatever, for I believe it's four seconds, which is actually how you pair them. But right when you press that, it's gonna to go to whichever device you have active in rolling with sound, if that makes sense there. So pretty cool, if you ever get in that bind, just hold it for four seconds, bam, and you're gonna pair up to, again, your PlayStation, your Ally, or whatever it may be. So I never really had an issue with connection, it just had that slight delay every now and then. Now the other thing, as far as my time actually using these buds, is the battery life, where Asus is stating you get up to, I believe it's 48 hours, of course they're charging within the case and everything, they got the fast charge, I never ever had a battery issue with these. Again, you slap them right in the case, close them up, they're gonna charge right in there. They also have QI charging, so super cool. Set it down uh, on your charger in your car or something like that and they're just gonna charge, but of course you can charge my USB-C as well. I did pretty much all the time keep my RGB off on them, just I didn't need it. Like why drain a slight percent of your battery for that even though it's minimal? I'm just like, why? I don't need it, I'm not seeing it, you know? But again, battery life was fantastic. And one other thing as far as features and functions with these earbuds, again, talking about using them Bluetooth or via the dongle. Well, via Bluetooth, I still notice that slight delay. I don't know, I can notice it across anything, whether it be headsets. If I'm gaming, it's very mild, but when I'm watching videos, it's definitely a whole lot more prominent. I don't know, I'm just bad at that because I watch so many videos and test so many headsets that I notice that slight delay and it drives me nuts. And yes, you do have that slight delay here. Now, when you go to the Speed Nova dongle, which is fantastic, because again, like all the other buds I showed you, they all use those USB-C uh, adapters, dongles now, and it relieves all of that delay right there. So my preferred method, of course, always is using the dongle. It's definitely a much better experience. Now, unfortunately, on the Ally, you all know you don't get much battery life with this, maybe an hour if you're lucky. I'm really chugging mine out, you know? So I'm usually running it charged up here with that uh, cable ran in. So I couldn't run it with my dongle. I can run it like that for an hour, but again, being plugged in, I couldn't, I gotta get like some sort of adapter or something. So that was a little bit of a stinker, but yes, priority, I would definitely recommend you use the dongle over Bluetooth, unless you're just listening to music. Now let's go and talk about the sound of these buds. And again, I've used them on my Ally, my phone, my PC, and the PlayStation 5. I would say the majority of my time was on PC, uh, playing uh, Helldivers 2, and then Diablo on the Ally here. And talking about the sound of these, I wanna talk about, again, where they're fitting in the ear, where I was saying they don't jam in there and lock in. So even though they got the uh, noise cancellation, and I usually kept mine on high, the noise cancellation, which it's 
a good noise canceling. It definitely does it if the dryer's running or something, or a fan's running, or my PC is chugging, right? It'll cut that out completely. Now, me using a glass mouse pad or a hard surface, and I'm playing on my PC and the mouse is kind of clicking down, there will still be a very mild audible click kind of like that in the background if you're using a mouse, even with ANC on. But you got those multiple levels. So I'm not sure if like you're on uh, the train or something, I think you'll still be able to hear a little bit there. But that core like rumble, deep background bass type sound, it did cut those noises out. And going along as far as a sound where I'm talking about these don't jam into your ear, it's also letting a little bit of that noise in as well. But that could vary ear shape to ear shape. Again, we're talking about these fit into mine. And again, they were still slightly loose no matter what tip I used. But going into the core sound experience across every device and every game, these are definitely a little bit fuller and they have some really fun punch in there as well, right? So even if you're dabbling with an EQ like I showed you over there, where I pulled out a little bit more bass, even if you drop that bass down, they're still punching these. I'm talking fun punch, like classic beats punch. Like if, if, if you like that, just that fun, like you get into Diablo or something or playing Hell Divers and just drop something down, oof, when that hits the ground, it like gives you nerd chills. It's so cool. Again, I love that, that beats profile. No, it's not the best audio file. I am sound profile. You can get out there, but man, is it fun fun. And when I'm gaming on the go or I'm listening to music or something, you listen to hip hop, EDM on this, they thump, but it's a clean thump. It's not muddy. It's not drowning anything else. Now, yeah, the bass is going to be prominent, but you get that bass and that body in there. And it is just, again, it brings me back to old school beach days. It was so fun, whether that be gaming or especially with music. Now, flipping that around a little bit, again, you can dabble with an EQ, pull it down, pull out your highs a little bit, and slap on that die rack, if I'm saying that right there, and it'll truly just crystallize that sound and pull out some of the detail. The bass is still going to be prominent, but you can definitely clean it up. It, that sounds kind of bad, because you don't have to clean it up. I would say it sparkles it up. It pulls out those highs and those details a little bit more. So that's what I really liked. I liked pulling out that bass with my EQ I showed you and then slapping on Dirac. And it was just, again, it was fun. It was fun. And that's what I look for when I'm using earbuds. This is not my primary audio source, even though I love using them, I'm gonna continue using them. But again, on the go, I had so much fun with them. But side note, as I mentioned my EQ and how I prefer my sound with the Dirac and all of that, trust me, dabbling with an EQ with these, which I told you not to focus on that, because every little bit you adjust here with the Dirac, with the clarity, with the bass boost, so on and so forth, it's just a straight up EQ, you can really, really tweak the sound of these to pull out more highs, more bass. Again, yes, they are centralized around that warm sound, a little bit more bass, but you can pull out that thump. You can pull out those highs and have great dialogue. It does it all and every little bit you tweak in there truly adjusts them. So you're gonna really be able to find a sound that you want. Again, you can refer to mine. You all know I prefer a little bit of highs, but all my buds, I prefer that fun, rumbly, punchy sound. So again, just play around with it. Don't put them in your ears and be like, ah, I don't like these or oh, I really like this. Give it some time, right? Delve into those settings and really adjust them and tweak them up. And I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with them. But yes, you do gotta tweak it game to game. Because if I was playing Hogwarts Legacy on the PlayStation 5, for example, like some of the settings, the 3D audio was set on um, the PlayStation. And then I looked in here and it was on here. And I'm just like, what the heck, man? This is like an echoey mess. It was chaos, right? So you had to get in there, adjust those settings, adjust these settings for that kind of game. And then you can get that great sound. And then coming over to Diablo, again, I'd have to pull out a different kind of sound for that. Because again, each profile, each setting was quite different for each game. So hopefully that made sense as far as the sound. The two biggest things you can take away within my ramble about sound is number one, they are bass driven. I don't even wanna say heavy because that just sounds bad, but they got some punch. They really have nice bass. Number two is make sure you tweak and play around with your sound, right? For each game. Don't just give up on it. Get in there, really play around and adjust it because you'll really be able to dial in into something you're going to have a good time with. So now the big question of are the new ROG, Sentra, True Wireless, Speed Novas, what a mouthful, earbuds, worth it? 
Well, let me be straight with you. I don't know how much these cost. I contacted my PR guy. I said, yo, I'm not seeing the MSRP on these anywhere. I don't see it anywhere online. I don't know if I'm missing it, but I think this is a really good way to go about it because I can just talk about with all the other earbuds I've used before, Razors, AirPods, uh, HyperX, Epo, so on and so forth, the features, functions, and my experience with them. What do I think they're worth? I can look on Amazon and see what other ones are running for. And it seems like 150 bucks is kind of your point where you get a lot of options. You got other ones for 90 bucks or 80 bucks. But again, it seems like 150, you got those one razors that are 200 bucks. But And the original ones were 100 bucks. So we can go off that, right? Talking the original ones being 100 and some of the other ones being 150. What I would like to see with the features, functions, it's pack and USB-C, the wireless charge and the Bluetooth, right? 130, I'd love, if these were 130, I'd say, yo, know, prime time, perfect. I could see these coming in around 150. Hopefully they're not more because once you get into that $200 price range, like those other Razer ones, I think that gets a little bit iffy for earbuds. You know what I mean? I, again, would love to see these at 130 and I'd say, okay, complete win. 150, I'd be like, all right, not too bad. They're packing everything I want at that, but you have a lot of comparisons once you start getting to that $150 price. But one thing I can tell you is I honestly had a fantastic experience with these. I loved all the features and functions, the sound profile. I had a blast with them, the customization, the flexibility across all platforms. I had a blast with them. I really enjoy them. If I go to earbuds, these will be my primary ones right now. When I go out traveling, this is what I will take. Heck, I'll probably even leave my AirPods Pro at home. I just had such a good experience with these. I like them a lot. So I hope this video was able to help you out. If you got any more questions, please ask right down in the comments. Always glad to talk shop and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.